Hello and welcome to the Hope Hotspot. We recently had Andy Flanagan from Christians in Politics come and talk to us on a Sunday morning about what the organisation does. So for the Hotspot this week, we have the audio from that presentation. Good morning again. What a privilege to be with you. My goodness, we're just, Jen and I were just sat in how, at home, one feels here. <laughs> just amazing to be with you. So wonderful. So wonderful. Um, some of you may know... Um, that kind of like uh, my, my day job is, is leading a thing called uh, Christians in Politics. And uh, one, of the, one of the signs of a, a church that's alive and thriving is, is the engagement of its members in the different spheres of society. And so it's always been a joy and a an enc- huge encouragement and excitement for me how folks from this congregation have been in, actively involved, especially in local and national politics, thinking of Dean and Maggie and all, all their engagement. It's been amazing to see and, and be cheering from the sidelines as these guys have got involved. And it's my privilege to uh, lead the work nationally, encouraging Christians to not just sit on the sidelines, but encouraging Christians to get involved in the nitty-gritty of politics and training them while they're there so that they keep a biblical theological spine and don't get blown by the winds, especially the toxicity of social media. So it's my privilege to do that based in Westminster and then taking the message out around the country as well. Um, I thought it would give you a little uh, little flavour of what we're doing as we take that message out around the country. We're on a tour called the Influence Tour uh, and you'll see the main thread of that message about influence. Hopefully, if you're sitting here this morning, even if you're thinking, well, do you know, I don't think it's my job to actually be a candidate to be a politician. There are so many ways to be influential. There are so many ways to be influential in our locality and nationally. And boy, do we, do we need that salt and light at the minute, you know? My, my bath has never got cleaner by me standing outside it shouting, be clean, yeah. annoyingly. Annoyingly, yeah, that's often what we do as Christians, isn't it? We, we stand outside and we don't actually, you know, roll up our sleeves and get stuck in and get involved. Um, so I hope you enjoy this little clip. How much do you know about Obadiah? If you're anything like me, not very much. That's because he worked behind the scenes. You could say he was the sound guy to Elijah's worship leader. King Ahab has been leading Israel astray, dabbling with other gods, and Elijah is told to challenge him. But Elijah doesn't just rant about this dysfunctional political leadership from the desert, screaming into the ether on social media and drumming up signatures for his Down With Baal petition. Instead, he seeks a connection with an actual human being. Obadiah managed Ahab's palace and affairs, and it couldn't have been easy for this God-fearing civil servant to be present at the heart of a regime that was doing such damage to God's honour. But he stayed. He was faithful. Then, at the right moment, he meets Elijah and is perfectly placed to broker a very unlikely meeting. The distant is brought close. So the rap battle to end all rap battles takes place on Mount Carmel. The prophets of Baal suffer total humiliation and an impossible bonfire that even Bear Grylls couldn't have managed leaves a lasting impact on the consciousness of the people of Israel. But it wouldn't have happened without the event management skills of Obadiah. It's as important to be holding the clipboard as it is to be holding the microphone. Elijah constantly confronted King Ahab from outside the court. We need brave people like him, but less of us are working on the inside like Obadiah. We need more brave people like him. Let's face it, it's much more exciting to see altars burst into flames than to be forwarding emails around government departments. Elijah gets to be the hero of Sunday school stories. Obadiah? Mm, Not so much. We can refine our message until it's perfect, then pump it out with every piece of technology we can find. But if we don't connect with any real people who are willing to listen, it may not bear the fruit that it could. The difference between noise and influence is relationship. If the very nature of God is a set of relationships, could it be true that the kingdom of God never moves faster than the speed of relationships? We live in a noisy world. So much information, but not much wisdom. How do we filter it? How do we work out which words to believe? We believe what's said by the people we know and trust. So wouldn't it be better if people were hearing our message from people that they know and trust? Making noise helps us feel better, but it may not be so great for the rest of the world. Noise makes you move away from something. Relationship draws you closer to someone. Do we just want to feel like we've done our duty? 
or do we want to have real influence? If so, we need to do the hard yards of relationship building. It may not be fast and it may not be pretty, but we will learn and be transformed in the process. And it may just lead to moments when impossible and beautiful things cause everyone to stop and stare and say, the Lord, he is God. Oh, thank you. So I wonder if there are some of us this morning who are feeling a bit of a nudge, a bit of a call. Not to something grand, not to suddenly be prime minister, but just to the next relationship. The next relationship. Jen, uh, when Jen, God very strongly, as you spotted earlier, called Jen into the field of theatre. And, um, and as she was praying about that, she, she experienced, the, the picture she saw was that just of somebody standing just a few yards deeper into the sea, a few yards deeper, and that'll be the next person, and then you hold onto their hand, and then you move out to the next person who's just a little bit deeper, and then the next person, and then the next person. And I don't know if you've seen the amazing sculptures by uh, Anthony Gormley that are on the beach in Crosby, those, uh, those statues that are standing all the way out to the depths until you can't even see their heads anymore. And God's just calling us to the next relationship. The next person who, to be honest, we might find annoying. And we certainly don't agree with. And they're certainly not like us. And they're not maybe that fun to hang out with. But actually, might we be feeling a nudge, a call to get involved in a residence association, in a political party, in a local campaign, and something that's praying and hoping to see this place transformed. Working with those who we won't necessarily agree with because that's where the missional evangelistic adventure is not just doing stuff with the people we agree with all the time. And it's amazing the common cause you can find, and that's the testimony from so many folks who have got involved in politics. Not that it's easy, it certainly isn't. And you'll have huge challenges and you'll take a lot of flack, but that's why we're called to it together, not as lone rangers. And that's, that's what we exist to do as Christians in politics, bring support and backup and accountability to those who are getting involved. So we would, especially at this time, really appreciate your prayers. There are so many believers who are working so hard on the inside. You're not going to read about it on the news, but there are so many folks in, in, on all the major parties who are working to bring reconciliation, who are working to try and bring people together, who are calling people together to pray. There is stuff going on that you don't see. Um, and um, we would really cherish your prayers at the moment. Um, we've, we've, um, uh, there, there are little sheets uh, on... Oh, I haven't lifted them. There are little sheets on the table at the back there that you can just fill in an email address if you'd like to pray for us. Or, oh, there, it fell down. Um, uh, in this post-GDPR age, to keep in touch with you, uh, we, we really uh, need to do it properly. So there's a place to just sign up your name uh, and email address if you'd like to hear from us, get more informed, uh, up-to-date prayer information from us, or like to support us in any way. Do please just grab one of those. They're sitting on the table over there. And, um, and also um, the, the book where most of the narrative of what we're doing comes from and the stories of the many Christians who have got involved is, is in this book. So feel, again, feel free to grab one of those uh, and do give us a tenner if you do grab one. That'll be helpful. Um, um, but we're just going to finish with a prayer from that book. Is that all right? To pray together, especially on this weekend. It's a prayer called God of all government that, that cries out for things to be different. Let's say together, your kingdom is a kingdom eternal. You never get voted out of office. God always does what he says and is gracious in everything he does. So let's pray together. God of all government, send workers into the harvest field of political life. Call your people, not simply those who pay you lip service, but those who hear your voice and know your name. Those who will not serve two masters, those who will choose kingdom over tribe, those who are not ashamed of the gospel, those who will speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves those who will seek justice, encourage the oppressed, defend the cause of the fatherless, and plead the case of the widow, those who will seek to reconcile more than separate, those who will seek to cooperate more than compete, those who do not despise the day of small beginnings, those who pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, those who will choose your glory over self-promotion, those who will choose truth over expediency, those who will listen to the still, small voice more than the megaphone of the media. Those who will care for the least of these rather than genuflect to the greatest. Those who will find their identity and security in their divine election more than their election by man. Those whose citizenship is in heaven and whose primary allegiance is to another king. Those who know your grace for their failings. 
those who are holy as you are holy. Call out an army that will march on its knees in humility to fight not just with the weapons of this world, but the invisible ammunition of your kingdom. Amen. Thanks for listening, folks. Bless you.